Here's a modified book problem Damp damped, about damped harmonic motion. I'm not going to do anything incredibly fancy here, mainly just getting used to these formulas. It's a tall building swaying in the wind, and what we're measuring is the horizontal displacement of a point on the roof from its usual position. And what we'd expect is you get a gust of wind, and it's going to make it shake, but then the shaking is eventually going to decrease. And the claim is a decent model for that is exponentially damped harmonic motion. Let's say we know that the frequency is... 0.5, one half of a cycle per second. The damping constant, we'll see where that goes into the standard formula, C is 0.9. And let's say we start the clock, in other words, we're going to set our t equals 0 uh, when, that looks weird, when the displacement is its maximum value, which we measure to be 1.2 meters. So it's going back and forth and back and forth around some middle value, and the maximum displacement from the middle is 1.2 meters. So let's find an equation for the motion this is using the standard model of damped harmonic motion and then answer a question, then maybe answer one, one more question at the end. Okay, so our standard model is y of t, y just because it's a good value, a good letter, and t because it's time, okay, is some standard multiplier, basically an overall amplitude multiplier, times e to the minus ct, which makes the amplitude of the cosine or sine decay exponentially times either cosine or sine. Well, if we want its displacement to be, to start out as big as possible, then we want a cosine, because remember that starts away from zero. If we put in a sine, it would start at zero. Okay. So we just need to figure out k, c, and omega. Okay. So, uh, to figure out k, we can just plug in t equals zero, and we get y of zero is equal to k, and Conveniently enough, e to the 0 is 1, and cosine of 0 is 1. There we go. And we know that y of 0 is this max displacement, 1.2 1 meters. Okay. So now we got it more explicitly. And now we they've actually given us, the hard part is if they didn't tell us c, if they told us some other information, that would be a bit more challenging, and we m probably won't have time for that. So they just actually gave us the 0.9t. And then we still need cosine omega t. We still need the angular frequency. Remember the angular and fuller. Angular frequency omega. How does that relate to period and frequency and things like that? Well we know that omega is 2 pi over the period. We've known that for a long time. Um, that's the standard relationship when we were st first started graphing sines and cosines. Okay but frequency, that's not the period. Oh that's 1 over the period. So in fact, it's just 2 pi times the frequency. Okay. So the frequency is how many cycles per second. This is how many radians per second. So another way to think about it is we take 0.5 cycles per second. Uh, let me just take that. Okay. Um, and then we just multiply it by radians per cycle. 2 pi radians per cycle. Uh, and so that's another reason why um, that's omega. It's just really changing units into radians. Okay. And so that's just going to be pi. Either way we do it, it's just pi, because f is 1 half. And so now we're finally ready to write this down for real. And so that's just going to be pi. Okay, so that's a very explicit function. Overall constant stretching in the vertical direction times a decaying exponential function times a cosine. Let's graph that thing since we're on the computer and just see roughly what that looks like. And now the question is, is the computer going to do a good, gra a good job graphing? Well, it's okay, but it defaults to negative values. So this says if you extrapolate backwards in time, you get a huge oscillation, but that's not realistic because our assumption was that t equals zero was when it was biggest and then it starts damping out of that. So I'm just going to change this to, let's say, 0 to 10 and get it to just plot again. Here we go. So there's it. It's maximum 1.2. And then it pretty quickly goes away. Exponentials d die pretty quickly. So after a few decent swings w back and forth, after a little while, it's just gone. And if, if, you know, t is like 100 or something, this is just really, really, really tiny. It's just negligible. Okay, so how could we answer this question? How long does it take for the amplitude of the motion to decrease to 0.2 meter? The important thing is that the amplitude is everything in front of the cosine. We're really getting 
a cosine times this decaying function. That's why instead of bouncing back and forth between the same limits, it's bouncing back and forth between decaying limits. Okay, so we just need to take that and we just need to solve that equals 1.2. So that equals uh, 0.2. Okay, so e to the minus 0.9t equals 0.2 over 1.2, which is 1 sixth. And so we need a log minus 0.9t is ln of 1 sixth. Can't re resist using a little rules of logs there. That's minus ln 6, and the minuses cancel. And you don't have to do that. At some point, you're going to need a calculator anyway, but it's nice to practice our rules of logs. There we go. Okay. And that's going to be 1.99. Okay. So t equals 1.99. So that's about four cycles. Oh, no, actually, that's about one full cycle. Remember, um, well, it would, there was half a cycle per second, so roughly it's taking two seconds to get from max to another max, and indeed, right about 0.2 is where that kind of peaks out at 0.2. Now, this is not saying it's the first time it gets to displacement equals 0.2. It gets there much quicker, but it's where the amplitude is this number, and so that basically says, when can we guarantee that we won't get anything bigger than an 0.2 displacement? It's after two seconds, because that's where the the maxima are, are decreasing to less than 0.2. A tricky question uh, for this kind of thing is like, what's the distance between this min and this max? It's very close to what you get for a cosine or sine based on this period, but it's a little different. Um, you probably need the calculator to get a precise result, but let's let's not worry about that. This is pretty good for this problem.